Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. Yo, Fred. It's the Murder Master Music Man Show. Jay. It's the Murder Master Music Yo, Show. Life.com. It's the Murder Master Getting Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Gallop Music Show. Seven. It's the murder master they used to say Hip hop is dead, but we don't resurrect it You follow what lamestream says, but here it gets rejected If you wearing tight jeans, don't expect to get respected I'm from a time where wearing black was always on your checklist From a time where faggots get checked if they reckless From a time where if you got too much shine, we snatch your necklace This real shit here, Columinati, fuck the industry We represent the street and they respect our street ministries Hate no shorts and cut the middleman, literally this Hip hop savior, our birth scenes like nativity. This is a place where no one sells out for relevability. And the masses can get a chance to explore more creativity. You gotta be kidding me. If you call that hip hop, niggas with high stays and fluorescent flip flop. We kill him, big brother, cause we know he watch. You don't like what I'm doing, then you can suck mine. Oh, and it's you the don't murder die. Master music show. It's the murder 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 Master Music Show. Episode 291, Murder Master Music Show, only at UGSForLife.com. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Prez. Um, hell of a show tonight. I'm telling you, you, you know what we do. You know what we're about, what we represent. Um, you can't represent more than, than our guest tonight. Um, one and only School D. I mean, this guy goes back decades, you know what I'm saying, and he's still here. I'm going to bring him on right Hello? now. Mr. Schooly D, how you doing? I'm all right. What's up, yo? Yeah, first and foremost, um, first and foremost, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Um, all right. Secondly, uh, thank you for what you've done for hip hop. Because uh, if it wasn't for people like yourself, there wouldn't be this platform that people have today. Um, you started. You started uh, uh, your career in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, where it's going today, it's kind of looking like it's it, it's going in a real fucked up direction. You know what I'm saying? From when when you started. What are your thoughts on right. hip-hop yeah. music today in, in 2016? Um, I get that question so many times. I don't even know how to answer that. Um, for, I mean, is it, I mean, you're talking about personally, because um, personally, um, I lived my whole life with hip hop, and hip hop started for me. Um, I was seven or eight, and I was painting, drawing, playing, and um, I was given the command to change life of black people and, and brown people. So um, that's personal. So for me. I see. I still see. I still see great things, and everything changes around ten years anyway. So I just keep changing. So as far as other artists, um, they say a lot of doctors say, psychiatrists say, whatever you was listening to in your teens um, before you became eighteen, that's the that's the music that inspires you. So funk and soul and jazz. Um, and poetry is the music that inspires me. So if it kind of don't sound like that, it kind of don't inspire me. But um, and um, not to say that anything new don't inspire me, but it's kind of like if it don't sound like it don't have that, if it don't make me thump, then it just don't inspire me. Um, as far as uh, like it's like I, it's like a new artist out of Philly, Chill Moody. I like him. I like some new cat, but. I don't know, dude. It's like I think it's um, then. There's, then there's the the business side. Uh, I think a lot of cats sold out. They just like they worry about their vodka and their you know endorsements and their sneaker endorsements and their Twitter endorsements even before they start thinking about like changing life. Um, 
for black people and brown people and white people in America and all around the world who actually need hip hop, who need the poetry, who need the music, because our job is important. For the real artists, our job is just extremely important. Yeah. So, did that oh, answer yeah, your question? Definitely. Most definitely. Okay. Well, you know, uh, it, it, it's still here, though. Like you said, it changes every every so often. You know, it goes in different yeah. directions, and it's still yeah. here. You know, going on you know the better part of fifty years now. Um, yeah. That's not just a fad. <laughs> You know, something yeah. that passes after five or five or ten years is a fad. It's yeah. still here. Yeah. How does it feel yeah. you to still be here doing what you're doing? You know what I'm saying? What kind of longevity do you have, and how do you keep going? I keep going because it's. Um, I just realized I got a, I got a, a lot of gifts. I got a gift of art to give to people. It's not just. It's, I think with. Um, I'm gonna go back a, a, another second. Is like I think we gotta stop treating hip hop as just tracks and songs. I want. I think it's like we're missing the art, we're missing the poetry, we're missing the fashion, we're missing the lifestyle, we're missing the furniture, we're missing all of those things. We're missing the the dancers. We, you know what I mean? We're missing the break beats. We're missing the seventies. Um, we're missing the professors. Um, we miss that we damn sure missing. Uh, we're missing the women. We're missing the unity. That's that's a that's to 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 so when so when I get that that question about what I think about hip hop today, it's confusing to me because I know people are just saying like, what do you think about rap songs? Um, so so that uh, to complete the answer to the first question. So the answer to this is like something like I know I'm going to do this until I die. I'm going to paint. I'm going to draw. I'm going to create poetry. Um, I play five instruments. Um, I'm going to do cartoons. I'm going to do film scores. I'm going to tour. Um, I'm going to do it until I die. So that's not, it's no surprise to me. And I, and I ask that question to a lot of cats who are into hip hop now. Did, did, did you fall on hip hop or did hip hop fall on you? And you'd be surprised how, hey, I'm talking about some great motherfuckers, some great DJs, some great rappers, some great singers, some great dancers, where it was just like, they saw something on TV and said, well, I'm going to do that just because somebody else yeah. is doing it and making money. Now, a true artist, you know, does it because that's in his blood, and they can't help themselves. So I'm a true artist. It's in my blood, so I can't help myself. I can't stop, even if I wanted to stop. It's like a lot of the elements missing in and shit. Yeah. You know, everybody just, they they just think hip-hop only means just rap all the time. But yeah. It really, it really ain't all about that all the time, you know. That's just yeah, that's just one, one way of express. That's the musical side of it, and a lot yeah. of this rap ain't shit anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because a lot of cats. I had I had tons of cats um, uh, spit nice lyrics, man, about their hood, and then and then they they play they play me these songs and and, and they're like. Um, they're like uh, stripper songs. So I'm like, well, why don't you put those other songs out? Uh, you know, the, the songs that sound like poetry. And these jolly young cats, they scared. But right. when I look at them, I'm saying, so like, I'm like, well, so, so how's this bullshit got you so far? Nowhere. So why don't you try? You know what I'm saying? I hate to sound like Donald Trump right now, but so what the fuck you got to lose? If you put out yeah, exactly. Artistry. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. The bullshit you pumping ain't working. That's why I say some of these motherfuckers uh diluting their shit to sound like the next motherfuckers and they still not coming out with it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Still not so it's like strong. what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, if you ain't uh, changing if you put a lot of a lot of cats, they not um they not put here on earth to change. They just put here on earth to 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 exist till they die. And those are the cats who who are just like existing until they die. And and you know what I'm saying, and and the way we look at it it's like, um, it's like it's we let them in because it's easy, you know what I mean. Jazz mm-hmm. didn't work that way. Jazz is like um, I'm writing the thing called so hip hop. Be jealous of jazz because you know when the whole Kenny G movement came about, you know it was like jazz was losing, like real real trumpeters was losing out. But then they they took it back. They took it right back to the club and said, you know what? If you want to be part of jazz, you got to learn. You got to start from classical and you got to learn up. You got to know who everybody is. If we did yeah. that in hip hop, if we did that in hip hop, it would change. But now it's just too—it's too easy to say 
I mean, you the dude who don't know shit about rap or, or even care about us to get up and right. just make a song, do, da, 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 do, do, da, da. And say that and so, you know what I'm saying, go put a YouTube hit and I'll get signed and all of a sudden so people will say he's the greatest rapper in, in, in the whole world. And we looking at him like, wait, what the hell happened? How the hell, how the hell happened? And we right. got people telling us, they tell us, they, they, they literally tell us that, well, you can't, you can't say you can't you can't say who's part of hip hop, but everybody classical music can say it, orchestrated music can say it, jazz music can say it, anything rock and roll can say it. They all have a balance. You just can't walk walk into any one of those the, the musical genres and say I'm part of it without studying the history. But in hip hop, anybody can. Yeah. Say it. And we gotta we gotta put that line up and say no, you can't. It used to be like that. It used to be like yeah. that. It used to be like yo. If you can't do this, you can't be part of it. Uh, yeah, we're just, we're, 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 yeah, we are just yeah, MC. Remember? You know what I'm saying? We call, if you were the suck MC, you couldn't play. <laughs> yeah. You could not play. You know suck a DJ, you couldn't play. But now it's so easy. Everybody want to play. Uh, oh, yeah. Anybody can. Now we're back. Back in the day, you had to really have talent. You had to have a... a you know what I'm saying? You, you had to blow up pretty much in your area first. Um, mm-hmm. What was the process like for you first coming up as far as, you know what I'm saying, getting your music out there? You talk about art. Didn't you do all your own art back in the day, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was drawing and painting to tell the story. Um, I think with me, I was, um, I, was, uh, I was ignorant to the fact that I thought everything was art. If you understand what I'm saying, so when I was when I started making records, it was like it was they were street records, but they had an art to them. So mm-hmm. when when I made them, they, I, I made sure they were pure. So when I took them to radio stations, they were just like, "Well, we can't play that." And I'm like, "Well, why? It's, it's, it's art. It's my art. You're supposed to play it." And it's like, "No, there are rules to playing your art." Which is like, I'm like, you know what? Well, I didn't change my rules for my art. At that moment, it's just like it almost made me cry because this was black because this was black people telling me that I had to change my art to have other black people listen to me. Right, but I found my way around. It was like, and going back to that, I just made my record sound extremely unique, and I did my own stuff. So you know, I got to do my own artwork. I got to produce it myself. I got to write it myself. I got to put it on my own label. Because nobody gonna understand it, and it has to be badass because it has to compete with like the Run DMCs and just getting, and just getting tons of airplay and, um, and the heavy D's. You know what I'm saying? It was getting rotation, but it was like street records was just even more important. Street records was like they they were the foundation, and you know what I'm saying? So you had to be badass because nobody even knew what rappers looked like back then. You know what I'm saying? Right. They they just had to imagine. You know, you had no videos. You had, you know what I'm saying? It's like it, you, you didn't get no TV play. You didn't get no radio play. All you got was club play and what the, and what the cat sold at the, at the record store. That's what you got. And you saw, we sold millions, millions of records that way. Yeah. So that's the, yeah, yeah. And, You know, what's amazing, too, is, uh, you know, so many people were influenced by Ice-T. You know what I'm saying? Including NWA, Easy E. They all said they were. But Ice T said that you influenced Six in the Morning with PSK. Um, yeah. How does that make you feel knowing that you influenced not only one of the biggest uh, rappers, one of the biggest actors? I mean, this guy's in a uh, million people's living room every week. How does that make you feel well, knowing that you influenced him? Well, it's like, you know, it comes from a time it was like, it was real, it was like really only 15 national rappers. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so with me being that way, and it was like I was, I did help them out. I helped out two live crew, you know, you know what I'm saying? But, but it was like, it was a brotherhood. So I was just looking at it as ICE as part of the brotherhood, my West Side brotherhood. Um Right, and then he called me up, and he said he's putting it out, but he wouldn't put it out until I approved of it, and he played it for me on the radio. I was like, yeah, that's that's, that's cool, he put it out. And, he, and I went to England for like um, six months, and I came back, and I was out, and I went over to L.A., and we, we job, and he introduced me to Dre and those cats, and you know what I'm saying? So 
but it wasn't like a thousand rappers it is today. You got to remember, like fifteen national rappers. So we it was yeah, like uh-huh. out, I mean, and and then you got outside of New York. Outside of New York, it was just kind of like five national rappers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we had to stick together. We had to help each other out. You know what I mean? And so, so that was it was kind of easy. It was it was easy for me to help somebody out. And, and this was way before the East and East Coast and West Coast wars. It was way before that. So it was just like we, it, it was, was more unity. It was just, yeah, it was a lot more. Yeah, it was like it was a fraternity like, almost to say like everybody just was, looking out for everybody because y'all doing the same type of shit. Yeah, it was a fraternity. You're right. It was a fraternity. And we had we could it was like a, and we knew we knew that nobody else was gonna help us out. Yeah. So that was that. That's the cool thing about that. Yeah, you guys, you know, you, you, you like you said, Ice T called you up and got your yeah. permission to do that. You know what I'm saying? You guys had more more respect for each other, yeah. and you paid homage to each other. That's another thing that's kind yeah. of missing today. Um, you know, and, and it, it, I don't know what happened. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like these guys, they'll take a style, they'll even take a name. They won't even research it. Like there's this one white <laughs> dude rapping. He calls himself Ant Banks. The Ant Banks I grew up <laughs> listening to produced for Too Short. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Right. It's like, Google, motherfucker, you, at least look. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> at least look. It's crazy. Well, I think... Um, I think what happened is it's just like you know what, once um, once local radio stations stopped playing local talent, I think, and then with like two or three people um, programming, and then you had like two or three. It, it was just it started with two or three labels all of a sudden, then two or three labels was like putting two or three people down and said, no, that's not hip hop anymore. This is hip hop, and they start watering it down. And said you know, then all of a sudden it lost like. It just lost like you had you had hardcore hip hop, you had gangster hip hop, you had gangster hip hop, you had gang hip hop, you had political hip hop, you had fun hip hop, you had dance hip hop, you had girl hip hop. You know what I'm saying? You had all these different genres in one genre, all these different sub genres in one genre that was heard on the radio like every day. Like I didn't mind that my records were played after like nine o'clock because that's the kind of record that was making. So that means I didn't have to change. But now it's just like it's just one sound one way, same cats all day. So that I think, um, like I didn't have any, I didn't have any um, part in changing that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I stood my ground. Um, I would have to say, I would have to say, the late '90s had part in changing that shit. They, I mean, you know, maybe they, maybe they stood their ground. Yeah. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Maybe, but you know, but change is inevitable. Should change all the time, but I got a um, I got a good feeling that you know it's going. I got a good feeling it's going to go back. I mean, jazz went back. Everybody, you know, it was a time when you know it was man, you couldn't all the jazz clubs all over America closed down. Like every last one of them. Now look at look at jazz. Jazz is like everywhere now. It's back. Yeah, I've been noticing a lot of people uh, lately been doing these these like freestyle challenges off old beats. All of a sudden. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. got everybody doing the Sogon Challenge. I see Mob Deep got one. The Outlaws yeah. got a Hail Mary Challenge. and So, so yeah. maybe it's getting people back to spitting something and maybe hearing, but who knows, yeah. man. I'm, I'm glad we had, all... we had the shit that we came up on, too, you know. But the thing is, I, I think we also have to, like, um, uh, see, one thing that, that in the 80s and the mid-90s, it was like the audience knew if they wanted – their acts to make dope records, they had to pay, and and the and the and the, and the hip hoppers and the dancers and and the clothes designers knew that once they got paid, they had to produce the dopeness. So that was a hands on, and but I think now it's kind of like with the with the freedom of like you know you got to sell it, you got to put it give give it away free on YouTube and what whatever. It, I think that killed a lot of artists from my era and good artists from, from the 90s, like Red Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of a sudden, people didn't feel like they should pay us anymore because the new the new stuff was YouTube where nobody got paid. And I think right. that's yeah, yeah, all yeah, the that's, that's everybody just giving away their music. 
Yeah. Yeah, but that. Because you can go anywhere and people just selling your music for like hella cheap too, like the bootleg and it's out of control. Yeah. And that was that was that was part of that was part of the plan to get us out the way. It was like, you know what? If there's a real rappers and real hip hoppers and real designers and real dancers and the real poets and real politicians, if they can't make money because you know nobody, you know what I'm saying? Then we'll put people in that we think should be making the money. That was yeah. part of it. I, yeah. I know it sounds like oh, yeah. a crazy plan, but that was part of their plan and it worked. Because all of a sudden, you see like a lot of groups. You know, like me, T E I all of a sudden it was like they can't go out on tours, they can't buy you know, nobody wants to buy the records no more, they want it for free, buy the buy the buy and all of a sudden you get um these young groups that come out, I don't you know, saying it's like I never even heard a record, but they got they making money from vodka deals and teach you know what I'm saying? They're not really making right. money from music and they're telling us that the music is really not important, the message is really not important, the fashion is really not important. The um, the poets are, are important. The politics are important. This is important. Vodka deals and one song with the same thing going over and over again. Bitch, 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 bitch. Eat my dick. You can make a song like that. And all this, you know what I'm saying? You get a vodka deal. Yeah, all, all day long. Yeah. <laughs> is that kind of how you got involved with the Aqua Teen Hunger uh, stuff? Was to kind of create and do different shit and step outside the box? Or I've always is that something I mean, you always I was, wanted to do? I always wanted to do when I was. 12, I told my mother I was going to grow up and write a stupid new song. I mean, this is just, this is, these are just things I wanted to do. Plus, I'm a cartoonist, so I always wanted to be involved with that. And I was like film, film composing. So, I, but I already, I already knew those guys. They had like a, um, I already did some work with them on Space Ghost. And, um, they had another cartoon called Rudy and Go Go Show. So, mm-hmm. I was always, I always wanted to be involved with cartoons. And cartoons, you know what I'm saying? Booty always told me, said, if you, if you, if you Stay in the cartoon world. You can do any, you can be anything you want. So you know, that's all I got that good. Yeah. yeah. And I was saying was the shit too. You know what I'm saying for what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crack me the fuck yeah, up all the time, man. I have, four, I have 14 seasons out of that. Crazy, right? That boy meat wide, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 that motherfucker, motherfucker, boy. We got away with some stuff, man. We got away with some stuff. But that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah, I mean, that's, so where, where, that's crazy. No, go ahead. So where am I performing at when I get in town? Let's see. Well, where you want to perform doing at? a I'm show uh, this this uh, Friday. In St. Louis. Yeah. Oh no no no! Saturday. You're doing one uh, uh, the 27th uh, this Saturday in Chicago. Yeah 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 yeah. Oh, you gonna be up in the shot? Yeah, yeah with the homie. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the homie EC Illa, uh, one of uh-huh. the, one of the dopest uh, cats of the microphone, and then of course uh, yeah. yourself. Yeah. Uh, now this is gonna be uh, this Saturday, um, mm-hmm. which is the 27th, 11:30 p.m. Oh. to 3 a.m. Right. Boy, you guys are gonna keep them up all night long. Um, <laughs> And I'm it's over at Lily's 2515 <laughs> North Lincoln Avenue, Chicago. Uh, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope that you're going out there and you're doing these shows. That I'm seeing it's the 30th anniversary of Saturday night. Congratulations, man. Yeah, thanks, my brother. Yeah, that's good. I know. I'm going to um, – um, you got any more questions? Yeah, I, I, I just had a, uh, a couple more real quick. Um, okay. The the next question I have, um, you know, we were talking about you know Ice T earlier, you know, uh, mm-hmm. two live crew and stuff like that. Do you ever um, right. you ever talk to any of those guys today, possibly about maybe even doing a tour or even making music together? Um, I, the only one I really keep in touch with is Chuck because we brothers, Chuck T. We talk all the time. We, we um, anytime he's around, we did a tour together about. Two and a half years ago, the hip hop guys. We're probably going to go out. Um, I'm going to work with some, with some stuff. Hopefully, we can work with me on the drums, Flavor Flav on bass, um, uh, Chuck on vocals. That would be fat. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I would have to say because I've been spending a lot of my time in, uh, in the world of art. So you know, I'm doing painting and drawing, creating furniture and. Um, 
uh, and film composing. But I'm just getting I'm just getting back out on the road. But it's fun. Being on stage is fun. Uh, but the only yeah, cat yeah, I probably yeah. would work with right now would be Chuck and Flays. They, we have the same energy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean that's dope. I, uh, speaking of art, you know, we'll end it on that note. I want to uh, another another artist, uh, Burt Young, from uh, the Rocky mm-hmm. movies. Of course, you know Philadelphia. Uh, yeah. He's a, he's an artist too. He's putting his art out there. Do you do any anything as far as like art galleries of your stuff? Do you like uh, take it and travel around with it? I mean, what do you do with your art? Yeah, I do art galleries. I think that the next um, art gallery show we're going to have in New York at the Roots um, Gallery, OK Player. Um, it's going to be in March, and it's going to be it's going to be Philly versus New York. So it'll okay. be me and my man Pablo Powers. We're going to create like you know twenty five original pieces for that. It'll be the next show. Well, that's what's up. That's wait once yeah. again. Thank you for, for coming on the show, everybody. This Saturday, oh, yeah. August twenty seventh. Make sure you check out Schoolie D. Saturday night, thirtieth uh-huh. anniversary. Yeah, Lily's in Chicago. Thank mm, you, again, man. All right. Appreciate All right, my brother. I'm out. We'll go. I'm, uh, make sure everybody turn on. Um, you guys, you guys watched um, uh, Mr. Robot. No, no, I haven't, no, I haven't, I haven't talked to Mr. Robot. Yet. You yeah. haven't clicked that channel. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no, I will now though, for sure. <laughs> you gotta go you gotta check it out. But, but it's your era, man. It's your, it's, it's all about computers and computer hacking. <laughs> it's oh, a joint, man. It's a, yeah, it's a joint, man. All right, brother. Let me go catch the last hey, half of that. Take care of yourself. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Right on, oh, my man. brother. All right. All right. You know what I'm saying? There's a legend right there. Uh let me bring him on. Uh yeah, yeah, China man, welcome, Fresh Kid Ice. How you doing? What's up, man? Oh, what's good? Yeah, with? man. Good you just missed Schoolie D, man. He was on uh, for just a little bit, just a little bit, and he had to go. But um, you know, say while we got you on here, be a perfect time to tell him about this compilation, man. Tell everybody what's going on with this because I think it's a phenomenal idea. Well, right now we're trying to put a compilation together. Um, compilation is, 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 is like Fresh Kid Ice Presents. And we, what we're trying to do is put together some old school acts with some new schools. So, you know, it kind of blend the two generations together in hip hop where the older ones will be able to teach the younger artists how to become legends and so forth and teach them things that they don't know about hip hop and so forth and the interculture, how it began and so forth you know, and what it takes yeah yeah, hell yeah man I mean, once again, you know what I'm saying uh, salute to you for uh you know what I'm saying? Looking out for the youth. It's a huge opportunity, folks. If you wanna uh if you wanna check it out, go to the real You know what I'm saying? Also, you gotta go there. If you're going there, you might as well pick up the new book, My Rise to Fame, um, which uh you know what I'm saying, tell them a little bit about that, but we're gonna have you on again here shortly and we're really gonna go go in depth a little bit about but but let them know about this book and why they need to get it. ASAP. It's the autobiography of a hip hop legend, you know what I'm saying, so forth myself. And how my group came to be, you know what I'm saying? To how two life group came to be, story of my life, how I got screwed in the industry and so forth and sold millions and millions of records and didn't get compensated twice. <laughs> You know, so yeah. it's, it's a lot of things to do's and don'ts. It's as real as it gets. If you're if you're if you're just starting out in the game, it's probably a must read. Um, you know, so you can see what what this man that we have here went through. You know, uh, but also, also on top of all that. 
Chinaman Records. You know what I'm saying? Monte Crisco, drill them out. Same fella. You got a whole roster full of people. Um, who's all on Chinaman Records at the moment? And, and let everybody know about them. Well, we have um, drill them out. They've been with me the longest. We have um, Fame Fella, Boy Dirty, Monte Cristo and the Red Team out of Detroit and so forth. You know, what we do, we try to take artists from different areas and so forth, network and, and try and put together a good product and teach them how to, to become future legends. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, it would have been the uh, uh, with. They're going to be uh, uh, on the compilation, I would imagine. Artists, you know, submit their, their stuff and so forth. You know, it's slots available because we're trying to put together the old school artists also with some of the Chinaman records artists and so forth. You know, it, it might cost you something. But we're going to promote the hell out of it. And plus, we're going to take it on the road. And all the artists on the compilation are welcome to come. See? See, that's what I'm talking about. This could be a, a huge tour. You know what I'm saying? And and the good thing about the compilation, if you can get the right artists on there, um, both known and unknown, they can promote the hell out of that thing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can get behind it and push it. And like you said, it could turn into a tour, or it could turn into a part two, you know. A lot of possibilities with something like that. A lot of different things about the industry as you go along, as we work with you and so forth, you know. As they say, aims to be told, not to, you know, told, you know. (laughs) Real talk. Real talk, man. Well, uh, I appreciate you, Chris. Uh, I was ho- I was hoping uh, Schoolie would have stayed a little bit longer, um, but uh, yeah, I didn't even do that. I was like, damn, I just had just finished yeah, my yeah, dinner. Yeah, we, we, like, we did. And so forth, because we go way back, you know, like in '86 and stuff. You know, we used to press his oh. records down in Miami and everything. So he mentioned y'all. He mentioned y'all. Yeah, when we were talking about Ice T, he mentioned Two Live Crew as well. And uh. You know, that's that's dope. But I'll tell you what, if you're uh if you're available Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, which uh which I think will be the thirtieth, um we're gonna have uh uh Raheem of uh you know, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. You know, that's gonna be a historical yeah. show. Um DJ Ready Red gonna call in for sure, I know that. Um off Ready top. Red I ain't heard in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and Red, man, that that right there, uh you know, he's making music right now too. You know, that 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 could be a dope uh, uh collaboration in the future. Cause yeah, him I and Mix, I always revere like, him and Mix as is the dopest DJs from my era, <laughs> you know. Them dudes were cutting it up for sure. For a long time, late night. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well your roots, man, your roots run deep in hip hop, you know what I'm saying, from the west coast all the way, uh, all the way back to the east coast and of course down south. Um it's amazing all the people that you've come in contact with, done shows with over the years. Uh I'm telling you, man, it's a hell of a story. People need to get that book, My Rise to Fame. Go right now. It's realfreshkidice.com. dot com. You know what I'm saying? Go to UGSForLife.com. You'll see the the, the picture of uh, Chris right there. Click on it and go right to his website. You know what I'm saying? Check everything yeah, out. Yeah, we'll the book went out today to you guys. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully you get it soon and you can pick it apart. And hopefully we can get Luke on the show when we do it again. You know what I'm saying? Do a roundtable with Luke, myself, and maybe we can get a little of records on there. Oh yeah, yeah. Dope. I would love to do that. I'll I'll throw Hell that yeah. out there. I'll throw it out there right now. 
uh, to Little Joe, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to him. I, I reached out to him once to come on the show. Um, he hasn't, uh, but I think that would be a dope idea that you have there, uh, Chris. You know what I'm saying? A round table would be great. We're going to have to put that into motion, see if we can make it happen. Um, that that would be that would be dope. You know, what would really be dope is at the end of that round table, there would be an announcement that says a two live crew records coming out in 2016 or early 2017. But you know that's wishful thinking. Let's hope it happens. Let's hope it happens. I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. But uh, hell of a show tonight. Shout out to the homie Schoolie D. Chris, yeah. uh, thank you, thank you as always, man. You're welcome anytime, man. We love to have you on the show anytime. Um, shout out to everybody. I appreciate in China, it, man.